<laughs> yes! <laughs> so you can go three for three, I don't know. Our next speaker, his business mistake was when he was just starting out. One of his first jobs was selling insurance. And he, his boss explained it to him, he didn't really understand it. And of course, then he sold it to his elementary school teacher who trusted young Lukash. And then it turned out it wasn't what she wanted. Not good. Lesson learned, make sure you know what you're selling. Get the facts. I'm noticing another theme. Let us welcome to the stage, Lukash. Why do you think there's so many people active in volunteering activities? Why do you think so many people do things, organize things for free? I see there one very clear reason. Because if you compare what you do during your day job when you're paid for something that you're doing, and you compare it to what you can do as, as a voluntary activity, the freedom you get is incomparable. I think that's why we, as Toastmasters, tend to organize all kinds of crazy events. And this is what I'm going to speak about. I'm going to look back at the TLI that we organized last week and then the key learnings I took away from it. But before I get there, I just want to take you to, um, to a moment that happened one year ago. I was just walking, in this, it was summer in Prague, I was walking in the city, I was about to meet a friend. The friend just texted me. Lukash, meet me and my friend at the rooftop of Okonidum Kotva. We are organizing a game for French students and you will have fun. Well, so I went to the rooftop of Okonidum Kotva, where is a very nice restaurant with a good view. I recommend it. I, I met the friend and immediately I saw that there is something weird is happening there. Because both of them, the guy and the girl, my friend, they were looking at a mobile phone and they were laughing. And they were laughing out loud. And I said, well, what are these pictures? And they quickly explained me. You know, we have these Erasmus students here and you're playing a, they're playing a game. We gave them a set of tasks such as take a topless picture with a stranger or fit in as many people as you can in a phone booth and take a picture. And we gave them a WhatsApp, WhatsApp group when they were posting the pictures and they have to prove they scored the points by sending the pictures to everyone. And because they were the organizers, they were just getting all the pictures. And I, I saw how much fun those people had, and I saw, well, how this could be a great team building. So in that moment, it was very clear. I knew we had to do this for those masters. It took one year, it took one year, but my opportunity came. Because, of course, it's not just when you're with those masters, you cannot just tell people, okay guys, let's do crazy stuff on Saturday evening, we'll get drunk, and we will take pictures of um, crazy freighters. No, that wouldn't work. So I had to wait until I had the opportunity to organize an educational event, which was which is last week. It was a TLI. In the end, we had 120 people attending, and apart from this crazy game, which actually was quite fine, we also delivered some education. Now, it was part of a high-performance leadership project, and this means and not just I, what I had to take, not just organize the event just to get it done, but also to follow a very specific process according to the Toastmaster manual that Daniel is just holding in his hands. And there was a couple of learnings that I had thanks to it. Now, the first learning from organizing this event was that whenever you're organizing something, always get a coach. Always get someone whom you can discuss this with. Because when you're a member of a team and you have somebody giving you directions, it's very easy. Whenever you need the advice, you just ask that responsible person who gives you directions, and it's clear. Or you can ask your team members or your fellow team members, somebody else who's working on something similar. But when you lead the team, what do you do? And I realized that what we was actually part of this project that you need to pick someone who will give you constantly feedback. So I was meeting on a regular basis with Aitor in Costa Coffee. Every week we would be drinking a cafe latte. And he would challenge me on the idea. So I did the overall idea what this project should look like. Aitor would look at it and say, 
Mm, Lucas, really? Is it so important? Is, is courage such an important one? Why is this important? And with every question, he would catch me off guard. With every question, he would, he would find blank space in my thinking. And this way, it really helped me reflect on what I was doing. And it helped me come back and try to get it better for, for the team. That was my first learning. Whenever you leave, just get it. The second learning is, I have to say, the team that was working on the event was, was brilliant. Most of the people were experienced with Toastmasters. And most of them already knew what they were doing. And the learning I took from that is that the key thing is just state the goal and then disappear. I think when we're responsible for, for something, when we're responsible for other people doing our work, we tend to give too much direction because we need